Hello everyone, uh, today in this activity you guys are going to be building some simple models of the various macromolecules which are essential to life. Uh, many of these macromolecules are what we call uh, nutrient molecules. They are present in our food and they provide us with energy and building blocks that create um, the cellular structures of life. The prefix macro means big and molecule refers to molecules. And so small molecules like water and carbon dioxide, they're like little teeny tiny molecules that are just made up of a few atoms. But macromolecules are made up of larger atoms. Now, a lot of these macromolecules consist of uh, these little uh, building blocks, which are called monomers. Now these monomers themselves are actually quite, can be quite large in terms of the number of atoms that make them up, but they're going to be the building blocks of even bigger molecules. Now these monomers are single parts. The prefix mono means one and mer means part, like in mermaid. So the monomers are going to build up even larger macromolecules. Now, the monomers have to be able to go together and form bonds between each other to create these bigger molecules. And the way this happens is through a process called dehydration synthesis, where um, water is going to be removed from the molecules to allow for uh, bonds to be able to form to create these larger structures, um, which are going to be called polymers. Now, the monomers, you know, they can also, uh, like if you uh, ate a large polymer, then we could actually digest that polymer down to its individual monomers um, by the opposite reaction, which is called hydrolysis, where water actually is added to the molecule to allow for that digestion. So monomers are going to be able to form these polymers. Now, the first polymer that we're going to talk about are our carbohydrates. Now, carbohydrates include our sugars and our starches. And in terms of our nutrition, the primary reason why we are going to consume sugars and starches is for energy. Now, our carbohydrates are built of small building blocks, which are called monosaccharides. The prefix mono means one and saccharide refers to like saccharin or sweet. Some simple monosaccharides that we can think of are things like glucose and fructose, simple sugars. Now we can put two monosaccharides together to make what's called a disaccharide. And a common disaccharide would be like table sugar um, or milk sugar called lactose. We can then further do the process of dehydration synthesis um, to build even larger carbohydrates, like those which are found in pasta or in potato chips, the starch that is our carbohydrates. A single monosaccharide is an example of a monomer. And then our chain of monosaccharides together are going to build our polymer. You know, feel free to pause the video um, to begin to build your first macromolecule. When you're ready, we can move on to our next one. Now our next uh, macromolecule, uh, number two, that we're gonna look at is actually one that's not really considered to be one of our major nutrients. And it actually is going to be a polymer that we will be looking at in future units more so. And that is the polymer of um, nucleic acids. Nucleic acids, some common ones, are things like DNA and RNA. And the main job of those is going to be to provide us with our genetic code. Now, 
Our nucleo, uh, nucleic acids consist of building blocks, which are called nucleotides. So just like how we had the individual sugars that built up our larger carbohydrates, we also have our individual nucleotides, which is going to build up our bigger molecules like our nucleic acids. Once again, they're going to be put together by the process of dehydration synthesis. Water is going to be removed where bonds can form to allow for the chaining together of these building blocks, these individual monomers, to make a polymer. And then when we're finished, we'll have a, uh, a type of nucleic acid. So it might be DNA. Or if we are reading our DNA, we might be creating some RNA, like messenger RNA. Like, for example, uh, for those of us that have had the COVID vaccine, we have received um, the coding sequence for the um, spike protein on the COVID so that we can then generate a immune response. Like I said, we're going to be looking more at the nucleic acids in some future units, but it's just nice to note at this point that um, you know, they are one of those amazing macromolecules. All right, so our next macromolecule that we're going to talk about is actually a really, really important one. So our molecule three is going to be our proteins. Now, proteins um, are built up of small building blocks. The monomers are called amino acids. And so the amino acids, there are 20 amino acids which are responsible for building all the proteins for uh, every organism on planet Earth. Now, some of these amino acids we actually can uh, just produce um, on our own through metabolic processes, while others we have to consume specifically from the food that we eat, and they're called essential amino acids. And so you, if you don't have them, then that could lead to, let's say, like malnutrition. Now, amino acids are going to be put together to create our larger proteins through a process called protein synthesis. And you might remember, like we're talking about cells, where are proteins made? They're made in the ribosomes. So at the ribosome, amino acids are going to be uh, assembled into a first chains, which then are going to uh, then develop into our essential proteins. And so each amino acid is going to be put together by the process of dehydration synthesis. So we're going to assemble a chain of amino acids to be able to build our various proteins which are necessary for life. Now, the main role of proteins is to be for our structure and function. Um, some common proteins that we've already talked about are like hemoglobin, which is a protein that carries oxygen. Um, we have other enzymes, like, or I have other proteins like those that make up our hair, keratin, um, our skin, collagen, our muscles. Um, so mostly proteins are going to be structural or functional, although if we don't have sufficient carbohydrates um, and we don't have sufficient fats for energy storage, then our bodies can rely on proteins as um, a, a last resort for getting um, energy. So once we've put together our um, our chain of amino acids, we have our protein. And another name for this chain, since it's a polymer, is called a polypeptide. Now, the last uh, macromolecule that we're going to talk about is our fats. And with a lot of fats um, or lipids, they don't really have the same kind of monomer-polymer relationship that we see with some of those other macromolecules. With the exception of our triglycerides, um, the fats that are usually our dietary fats. Our dietary fats are going to consist of essentially two building blocks, um, a molecule called glycerol, and three fatty acids. 
So that's why it's called a triglyceride because it has three fatty acid tails. Now, this might sort of look like the phospholipids that we talked about when we explored the cell membrane. Um, the difference being is that a phospholipid is only going to have two fatty acid tails and will have a phosphate attached um, instead. But similar to our cell membrane, these fatty acid tails are hydrophobic. They don't like to mix with water. Um, this is why when you put oil and water together, um, they tend to form two separate layers because of these fatty acid tails and their interaction or lack thereof with water. Now, um, we typically are going to consume our fats um, to be able to have a large source of energy, specifically energy that can be stored for uh, longer periods of time. Um, the buildup of fats in, in our tissues can help with um, actually cushioning of the organs. Um, and in some cases, especially with uh, Arctic mammals uh, like seals and whales, the fat can actually act as an insulator from the cold. In general, there are two types of fats um, that we kind of think about. We have our unsaturated fats and our saturated fats. And that has to do with the different types of fatty acids that are present in our lipid molecules. Unsaturated fats are usually liquid at room temperature. There are things like our oils, like vegetable oil, peanut oil, corn oil, olive oil where our saturated fats are more likely solid at room temperature coming from animal sources, um, things like butter or lard. Between the two, the unsaturated fats are typically the healthier ones in that they contribute less to the buildup of plaque in our arteries um, and the formation of atherosclerosis. Now that you guys have completed these models of the macromolecules, you guys are going to work together to complete the worksheets that are associated with these macromolecules. At your table, you'll have at least one person that has uh, the partner A pages and one group that has the partner B uh, questions. To begin, uh, partner A is going to be completing the problems one through nine. Partner B has the answers. So the goal is for partner B to guide, to coach, or to check partner A's answers. It's the goal is not to give them the answers, but to help kind of coach them through as you guys are answering those questions. Then when you move to the side two, Partner B will be completing uh, problems 10 through 15, and then partner A will have the answers. So once again, partner A is gonna guide or coach, checking partner B's answers, and then you'll continue for the rest of the worksheets with flipping back and forth, being either the, the, the partner who's answering the questions or the coach. If you have any questions, please feel free to uh, ask your sub um, as uh, she is a highly qualified biology teacher who can certainly support you.